that's fine. Don't mind. So, uh, okay, so this talk is based on the work I've done. Um, so yes. Yeah, my what will be in color of the name. Okay, so uh, I want to start with an overview of my talk. Um, so this is the QCD partition function where it's the C3 and Neil's action and the permanent determinant is the working of potential new. Um, and we all know that this determinant gives rise to a complex way of finite density, which is the cause of the side problem. So we wanted to look at this problem um, by focusing on the Poyakov loop. Uh, and we have considered two simple models uh, with two opposite limits of the gauge and so to say. So the first one is the is called PNJL model. So that's the extension of the number of senior model with the Poyakov loop. Uh, so it's a phenomenological model, and in our case, uh, we, it's based on the one-loop effective potential, and we add the unknown con confining uh, potential by hand. Uh, and we consider two uh, confining potentials. And the other case is the uh, SC3 spin model, and we have uh, constructed the transfer matrix um, associated with the uh, Poyakov loop. At strong coupling. And uh, in, in these two different cases, uh, we found two uh, same results. First, uh, the, the mass uh, eigenvalues associated with the Poyakov loop uh, become complex at finite density. And as a consequence, the, uh, the Poyakov loop correlator has the sinusoidal oscillation in addition to the exponential decay. So, those are the regions where that happens, and I will explain everything, uh, try to explain everything in this order. Uh, so first I'll just give a brief introduction about the sign problem. Then I think I'll spend most of my time uh, talking about the spin model, because this is uh, more recent. Uh, and then I'll uh, discuss our main results, and then talk a little bit about the uh, PNJL model. And then I will conclude. Okay, so uh, we have seen the sign problem many times already in this workshop. Uh, I want to uh, look at this in a little different perspective. So, so this is the evil determinant here, uh, and we can expand this as a sum over Wilson loops here, and also the Poyakov loops. So Wilson loop is given as this one, and the Poyakov loop is just a Wilson loop in a temporal direction. Now, uh, for each loop, there is a conjugate loop that goes the other way around. And for the case when the chemical potential is zero, uh, then we know the coefficients of uh, the loops and their conjugate loops are the same. So if you add the whole uh, loops, the determinant is guaranteed to be real. And this in turn says that the, the theory is invariant under, under charge conjugation C and complex conjugation K because they just change the loops to their um, conjugate loops. Okay, now, if we include a chemical potential, uh, even though it doesn't do anything for the, uh, the Wilson loop, uh, the Poyakov loop, you know, which goes to the temporal direction n times, picks up this uh, Boltzmann factor, and the conjugate loop uh, picks up uh, its inverse. So it's no longer symmetric under exchanging the loop. So C and K, are both um, explicitly broken and finite density, but the combination of the charge and complex conjugations, what we call CK, uh, is invariant because it's, in this picture, it's trivial because it just changes loop to itself. It's a, so it's a trivial statement. Uh, however, since you know, the gauge field transforms non-trivially under CK, uh, and it's, in fact, if you look at this uh, relationship, it comes from CK because you know, C changes mu to minus mu, and K gives the whole thing uh, complex conjugate. So whatever you know, models you, you, you work on, uh, any observable should respect CK uh, symmetry. OK, now I want to show how the CK and sign polar play a role here in speed model. 
So, okay, our starting point is the um, SU3 and MUs on the two dimensional lattice. So, this is the, the uh, spatial dimension, di dimension with length L and temporal dimension with length beta, or one of the T, with the uh, gauge uh, lattice spacing A. So, in this case, uh, we can solve the theory exactly by uh, integrating out all the spatial lengths. Uh, using character expansion, and the result is this effective interaction of Poyokov loops. Uh, right. So this is this is basically a three spin model in one dimension, uh, and just as in the easing model in one dimension, we can construct a transform matrix, uh, which in this case is just the probability amplitude for the two Poyukov loops at i and i plus 1 to be in some group elements of SU3. Uh, and uh, <coughs> so, so on, the, on the lattice, there, is, there are many choices for the action, but here we choose the so-called heat kernel action uh, because the, this transfer matrix becomes diagonal uh, with this Hamiltonian in the basis of the representation of character R. So here we choose g square beta over 2 to be 1, and this one, so in this case, this one is the trivial representation, and this one is the fundamental representation, anti-symmetric representation, and the agile representation, and so on. And if you look at these numbers, four thirds, four thirds, and three, those, those are the uh, string tension. So it's just uh, higher representations are exponentially suppressed. OK, now we include static quarks. Um, so we have seen this uh, before. Um, and this, is, this comes from the, the determinant with the Polyakov line comes from the, the, the quark contribution, where Z1 is the fugacity of quark with the static mass M, static quark's mass M, and Z2 is the fugacity of anti-quark. And uh, so this de determinant uh, can be written in terms of uh, boxes uh, in a row. So it's a Polyakov loop in the anti-symmetric representation. So for SU3, you have a polyakov loop, a trace P, and this one is trace P dagger. And uh, in the clutch bowman decomposition, these act as uh, raising and lowering operators. So the, it mixes states. Uh, in, so this, in this uh, here, I just said Z2 to be 0, so I re we suppress the anti hole contribution. So this is the uh, heavy static uh, heavy dense limits. Uh, and if you look at these two terms, uh, we see that this is Z1 squared and this is Z1. Um, so it's, it's not symmetric, right? So this is, so we see that, we see explicitly that the transfer matrix is no permission. And this is because the quarks and anti quarks are weighted differently. Uh, so indeed, this is the manifestation of the sign problem. I just want to emphasize, I forgot to mention that this is a transfer matrix in the spatial direction, so it's not P. So it's really in the statistical the easing model, uh, similar to the easing model, it's not in the temporal direction. OK, so now we uh, diagonalize this transfer matrix. And we can write it as you know, the lowest mass eigenvalues here, and the next one, M1, and so on. Um, okay, and then, so this one is the real part of the mass gap, and this one is the imaginary part, and Polyakov loops as a function of the fugacity of the quark. Uh, and so if Z1 is zero, then we see that all the, it's a permission point, so these, all the mass spectrums are real, there's no imaginary part. And there's another special point, the permission point, where Z1 is equal to one, so it's from this orange line, because if you look at this one, you know, when z1 is equal to 1, the Polyakov loop and the conjugate loop are weighted equally, so the determinant is real. Um, <coughs> so, okay, but somewhere between these two points, the, the mass spectrum, uh, if you look at these two, they merge at some point and form a complex conjugate pair. Uh, and it has to be a complex conjugate pair, otherwise the theory won't be real. Uh, and it comes from CK symmetry, which I won't prove here. Uh, and another thing is that if you look at all these three plots, it's invariant under Z1 goes to 1 over Z1. 
And this comes from the CK symmetry again. Uh, and here, we can interpret this uh, K symmetry as a particle hole symmetry. And uh, so it just changes Z1 to 1 over Z1. So, so if you follow this blue line, for example, uh, and at this uh, Hermitian point, if we change your particle to anti-particle uh, operator, it goes this red line. So this curve is symmetric around Z1 goes to 1 over Z1. Um, and if you look at the, uh, with more the parameters with mass and chemical potential, uh, we see that in large portion of this uh, phase space, uh, parameter space, uh, we see that the, the two lowest eigenvalues form a complex conjugate pair. And we also see a symmetric structure around mu equal m. Okay, and if I go back to this Poyakov loops again, uh, this difference between the Poyakov loop and conjugate loop uh, measures the non hermeticity And what I mean by that is if, we, if they are different, if the difference is large, then the imaginary part of the mass eigenvalue is also large. And if it's the same, then it's all, it's all Hermitian. Uh, it's all real. And this is uh, consistent with the previous work on P and JL models, and we discussed more in this paper. Um, now, and if you look at the Poyakov loops at large chemical potential, they uh, go to zero, which is consistent with um, the work with using other methods. And this is, of course, uh, due to the saturation of the quark number density. Uh, however, one could look at this as a consequence of CK, uh, because you know, if you start with zero, then if it goes to infinity, it has to be zero by symmetry. Okay, so what happens if the lowest mass eigenvalues form a complex conjugate pair? So if you look at the coordination function of Poyakov loop, at the infinite limit, a volume limit, you can write it in this form. Uh, and so in addition to this exponential decay, uh, you have this uh, sinusoidal oscillation coming from the imaginary part of the mass. And uh, so we, we chose some parameters. So I think we chose this one so that the imaginary part is large. Uh, first of all, we see that the correlation function uh, drops below zero, uh, which never happens in the Hermitian theory. And uh, if we take this exponential part away, we clearly see this oscillation. Uh, but however, it seems that the imaginary part is much smaller than the real part uh, in general. So it seems it's difficult to, to see this oscillation from the correlation function. Uh, and I just want to say that the, this oscillation, oscillatory behavior should remain in higher dimensions at strong coupling. All right. Uh, so, so, so we have seen in you know, the large the portion of the parameter space that you know, this oscillation happens. Uh, and we have also found similar behavior in uh, the case of PNJL models. Uh, so, so the idea is that you know, if you want to construct the effective potential in terms of the, the eigenvalues of the Poyakov loop, uh, so that is the, uh, the gauge field in the temporal direction, A4. Um, so th there, there used to be a problem so called the, the sign problem in the mean field approximation. Um, and so what we tried, so, what, so our, our solution to the problem was to use the analytic continuation of this uh, gauge field A4 and uh, look for complex but CK symmetric subtle point. Uh, and at this CK symmetric subtle point, the uh, free energy is real and Poyakov loops are different from the conjugate loop and color neutral is really uh, maintained and all good things happen. But what was amusing uh, at that time was that if you look at the mass eigenvalues uh, associated with this gauge field, and if you diagonalize it, it can form a complex conjugate pair. Um, 
And what this means, again, is that if you look at the correlation function of the gauge field in the temporal direction, it has the, it has the uh, sinusoidal oscillation again if kappa i is non-zero. And this is a plot. Um, so, okay. And this, is, this argument is general. It doesn't have to be PMJL model, but we uh, apply this to PMJL models. And uh, so, so this type A, so in our PMJL model, so the, the effective potential consists of the one loop, uh, effect, uh, the one loop potential, and we add some uh, confining potential by hand. So type A, uh, we add uh, this confining, we model the confining potential by just adding the mass term in the gauge field. Uh, and for type B, we, um, so we model this confining potential by, from the hard measure of SU3. And we see that the, the critical lines are pretty much the same for both model, models. But if you look at the, so this is a contra plot of kappa i uh, in the unit of MEV. Um, and we see that this boundary where the kappa i becomes non-zero is very different for two types of confined potentials. Um, <coughs> and uh, right, so, and this, this boundary uh, in condensed matter is called the, the, the disorder line. And we see that in both models, in the large portion of the phase diagram, uh, it's known to, uh, the kappa i, the mass eigenvalue is more complex conjugate pair. OK. Um, now, so we have, so there's a similar behavior in, um, in a simple liquid model in condensed matter physics. So this is a radial distribution function for liquid of size sigma, and we see this sinusoidal oscillation in addition to the exponential decay. And this oftentimes uh, happens around uh, near liquid gas phase transition. And in QCD, uh, one could look at the phase diagram uh, in this way where you know, on the left-hand side is hadron gas, and on the right-hand side is PGP liquid. And uh, so our interpretation uh, for this oscillation, especially if you look at this uh, correlation function, is that the, it's an oscillation of a color density uh, correlation function because it it's measures the screening of uh, two quarks in the medium, a quark and anti-quark. So it's basically the oscillation in the, the real part is, comes from the divide mass uh, for this quantity. This, uh, kappa R. So this is somehow something to do with oscillation of the, the density correlation function. Um, right. And, and okay. Now, now we see that in the both spin models, a strong coupling and the PNJL model in the continuum theory, uh, we found those oscillations. But in both cases, um, the, uh, the imaginary part seems to be much smaller than the real part. Uh, but it still doesn't mean that in real QCD, you don't know what is the, what's the, um, what's the, we don't know the behavior of the, as far as I know, I think nobody has looked at it yet. Uh, but even if it's small, there's another indirect, indirect way to, to observe this. So this is the case of the heavy quartz. And again, this is the disorder lines for model A and model B. Uh, so this would be um, gauge dependent uh, language, but if we measure this um, the, the the mass associated with the A4, so 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 it's two by two matrix because it's associated with the Cartan subalgebra of SC3, and uh, if you can measure it, so like say here in one loop uh, calculation, we know that they are different at finite temperature intensity, and if we go down. Uh, and if it hits the disorder line, they become the same, right? So by plotting those points where these two divide masses uh, become the same, uh, we can uh, indirectly uh, point these disorder lines. And this would, uh, so this order line would serve as a benchmark for the validity of bloody simulations at finite chemical potential and in return, uh, lattice simulations could differentiate the models of confinement. So, uh, 
So this is the conclusion. The mass eigenvalues are from complex conjugate pairs in models for finite density QCD due to the fine problem and CG symmetry. And as a consequence, uh, polyakov food coordinator oscillates. Uh, and it should be observable in those uh, simulations. Thank you. Questions for Luigi? Yes, I want. I'm not sure. You may have said um, the wavelength of these oscillations. How does that scale with the chemical potential? I no, I didn't say it. Um, for P and J, we wrote the uh, asymptotic behavior of this. Um, so this kappa i, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it depends on chemical potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this region where you know the kappa i is large is where the Polyakov the, the difference between the Polyakov loop and conjugate loop are the different the most. So it, there's some correlation, and they are different coming from the chemical potential. But there, there's a ex I don't know if it's for the case of and P and JL model, but there's some expression, the kappa i is a function of yield. I mean, it's, we, it's known in condensed matter physics, if you have a system with a Fermi surface, then there are oscillations in the correlation function between charge sure. density. Sure. Uh, and there, you know that the characteristic wavelength is of the same order as the, as the Fermi momentum. So I just wondered if... if, if also, you expect the kappa i is a I expect the kappa i to be of order mu. That's Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Interesting to learn. Absolutely. Okay. So I suggest we move on with the program. Let's thank the speaker again. So the next speaker is Keita Ronagata.